I think we'll get started. Um, I'll do a little bit of housekeeping just to get started here and remind every, let everyone know that the meeting is being recorded. We record all the town halls so that people who can't make it can watch them later. Um, and I want to apologize for not getting that post up on our site earlier about this. We did communicate it, but uh, we actually somehow or I actually somehow managed to leave the post in draft mode in our in our website. So I apologize for that oversight um, and uh, glad that looks like still a lot of people are here. Um, so I'll start off just with a couple quick things. First of all, I I really admire what everybody involved with college curling has done. Um, over the years, um, I was uh, I was a member of the board as an athlete rep when Gordon first started efforts in college curling, and then to see how it's growing organically has been impressive. And uh, so everybody who's been involved, well done. I know some of you think that we at USA Curling have sort of ignored college curling. I certainly don't ignore it. I think. You know, you may in some ways have been the victims of your own success and abilities in that people saw that it was running well and focused elsewhere, but didn't mean to ignore you um, and hope to engage this group fully going forward and, and including tonight. So uh, with that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to questions from everybody. Um, I know there's a few topics that people will probably especially want to talk discuss. So. Um, I'm happy to open it up at this point. Hi, Dean. This is Bobby from CCVA. Hi, Bobby. Can you explain exactly the nature of the organizational relationship between USA Curling and College Curling? Because it's a little unclear when I look into it. What do you mean by the nature of the organizational nature like of it? Separate entities are because, like, we, there's a college curling U.S. website that doesn't work, but then it's also on um, USA Curling's website. So I'm just trying to say, is it like a subsidiary? Is it separate? Is it is USA Curling actually running the college curling program or like? No, I would say I would say, Bobby, that in many ways, college curling has been self-directed. They uh, we do run the national championship for them, but much of it has happened organically. They do. They have scheduled their own played on events and established their own point system. Um, so that has been the relationship, which isn't much different than some other relationships we might have, but we don't have, certainly don't have direct control over, over college curling and we don't want to, to be perfectly honest. They, they have their own point system that seems to work. Uh, we'd be happy to discuss anything else that they want to change in that. We'd be happy to help move into a more formal role within colleges help with that effort but um you know that's the nature of it right now okay so how does gordon like what is he's chair of college curling but he's also like on the I, mean, I guess i'm just trying to understand like because it seems like it's being run by usa curling if gordon mclean is the chair of it I just feel like there's a potential conflict of interest. I'm just a little confused, I guess. Well, I think it'd be worth asking the people in this call, Bobby. I mean, um, if they, you know, Gordon has put in a lot of time with out of no, no other interest except to expand college curling. So um, I don't think he's claiming any power in this in this initiative. He's definitely been a factor. He started it. And uh, I think he would tell you that he basically I mean, somebody in here can tell me differently, but I don't think Gordon is directing the efforts of this group. Um, I'd like to jump yeah, in. If I could. Sure, uh, go ahead, Gordon. If, uh, yeah, if I could for just a second, in terms of the college curling website, that was something that I put together originally when we did not have a presence on the USA curling website. Um, and it got to the point that I just could not maintain doing that. It was also fun. All of that. Gordon, maybe uh, try my maybe, own pocket. Gordon, maybe turn your uh, video off. It might help your audio just a bit. Sure, Thanks. I can do that. Okay, I'll. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, this will be better. Um, yeah, the was. Website name and page. 
off -curve. I think we're getting a lot of breaking up with you, Gordon. Yeah. We might have to come back to you. Um, yeah, so let's, um, Gordon, we'll come back to you. I think, you know, the main points I got there, Gordon had started the college curling site himself, uh, and that's the background on that. Um, somebody's saying there, a go ahead, Chris. Um, yeah, I was just going to sort of um, jump in a little bit. Bobby, I appreciate those questions. Um, I wanted to share a little bit of sort of the dynamic of, of the College Curling Governing Board. Um, Sam Futch from Penn State and myself from Harvard serve as the national student reps on this board um, with several other representatives and Gordon, who's also the secretary of the USA Curling Board. Um, and, and the board is sort of different than a traditional board where um, you know, the board would sort of vote on things and then things would be contributed to constituencies. Um, really, it's more uh, that communications come top down um, through Gordon and then the board is sort of informed and then everybody else is informed. Um, so it's, it sort of works in, in what I view as a remarkably unproductive manner, um, which I think is certainly a point of discussion um, for tonight, in, in addition to many other things. Um, but in terms of questions for tonight, I wanted to um, potentially, if possible, kick things off. We um, sent in a series of questions on November 2nd um, from a number of clubs as national reps. Um, that we haven't gotten written answers to. And I was hoping that we could circle back to that um, and get some answers to those questions. Um, I'm happy to um, reshare them if necessary. Sure, that'd be great, Chris. I apologize if we didn't get back with written answers to those, but yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. So um, the first thing on those, um, sorry, I'm just pulling that up. Um, here we go. Um, so the first thing was um, asking for, so obviously some of these are a little bit outdated just because they were sent several weeks ago, um, but I wanted to ask for official confirmation that points earned at GNCC clubs and or non-USA curling clubs still count for points um, in the existing system that Gordon has designed. Yeah, uh, that's Perfectly fine. We approve the College Curling Association also as a, as a member club, so th they'll run events at Utica. Okay. Um, secondly, we require official confirmation that clubs based at non-USA curling or GNC clubs are still eligible for tour participation, um, and that includes things like nationals. Well, I will say that to, to compete at our nationals, at our nationals, just like in the five and under, we have teams that qualify for it that aren't from member clubs. But playing at national events, they're asked to be members of a USA Curling member club. Now, the College Curling Association is a USA Curling member club at this point. Okay, so just to clarify, um, if a school team, so I'm just going to use my team for example. Um, this isn't necessarily a situation, but just a hypothetical. If Harvard Curling were to compete at Broomstones, and let's say Broomstones were to decide not to pay USA Curling dues, um, we could not be based at Broomstones and then um, play in a national championship. Is that correct? At this moment, yeah, that would be the policy. I'm not saying that we couldn't revisit that this year, uh, if that's a situation we want to discuss. Um, you know, typically we run national championships for uh the clubs that support us I, I don't think that that's a particularly controversial ish stance um you know so we take that, on the national yeah yeah just to clarify so that would remove more than 50 percent of existing college curling teams and a vast majority of teams that qualified for nationals in the last two years one of which was um not held because of covid um, right. being able to participate. So how do you plan to rebuild um, with those students, given that, you know, like we're practicing, we're playing with one another and all of this is being tracked in points and, you know, like so much of what we do, as we discussed with Gordon in the most recent um, internal meeting is driven around nationals. How do you, how do you plan to rationalize um, sort of effectively kicking out the vast majority of, um, you know, this, this community? Um, um, just a sec, Chris. We're not in the we're not in the business of kicking out curlers. So I understand the concern here. If it's half the clubs, I'm certainly open to discussing it. I don't want to keep college curlers out of the college national championship. 
it will require some work on our side to make an adjustment in how those things happen. Um, but yeah, if it's half the clubs uh, and half the schools will be ineligible because they're curling out of non-member clubs, that's obviously something we don't want to we don't want to keep you out of your national championship. We do run the national championship. It does take some effort and we have to work with a club to, to host it, which we don't have right now, but I'm not going to be in the business of keeping half of your group out of a national championship. We'll find a solution to that. I 100% hear you and I, I appreciate that. And um, for right now, I want to move to the next question that was on this email. And I encourage anybody else to the on the call to sort of circle back um, with anything else on that point. Um, I'll skip the next question, which sure. is um, about planning for nationals. Um, so I, I want to um, ask sort of, you know, big picture, what is the future of college curling under USA Curling? Um, you know, like as a member of the board, I, I can't even wrap my head around what's going on because it feels like the vast majority of communication is coming from Gordon in sort of an autocratic manner. Um, and it's a very real possibility that the community will fracture. Um, folks will leave USA curling. A number of host clubs and current host clubs that really do sustain college curling um, may or can leave USA curling. And, and this community has just lost a lot of respect for the existing leadership. Um, you know, like how are how how are we going to rebuild? What's what's the existing plan, um, and how can we sort of hold USA Curling accountable for that? Well, I'm not. I don't think Gordon is wedded to to being in charge, and I'm certainly not uh, wedded to any format you have right now. It is sort of what developed, right? And like I said, USA Curling let it develop somewhat organically. If you would like to propose a new a new approach here, I'm more than open to it. I mean, if you want to say that we want to have an elected board that that uh, has some- <laughs> You put the words right out of my mouth, Dean. You know, I mean, that, I'm certainly open to that. I mean, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell this group how to, how to run themselves. I frankly don't think Gordon wants to either, but, um, you know, if, if you want to, put forward a new proposal and how this group can run, I'm more than happy to hear it and probably so, more than happy to embrace it. Thank you for that, Dean. Um, I will share two things. One, um, I personally, um, not just as a national rep, but as a college curler myself, would absolutely call for a democratic election of a board. Um, I think every position, including my own, um, should be an elected one, um, especially the national reps, but, but really, truly everybody. Um, and I, I think we should do that. Um, I will also say, you know, the national reps have been doing a lot of work to listen to our constituents and, and build into, you know, what we're advocating for on the board, not just our own needs and our team's needs, but the collective community's needs, um, which is where these questions are coming out of. Sure. And also, you know, like, we're, we're listening to our own proposals of, of how we should proceed and what we as national reps should be listening for. Um, so given that, you know, I, I don't want to take too much of everybody's time. There are a few more questions on here, especially pertaining to the um, disclosure of exactly where our finances are going. We don't really have any understanding. We pay an additional add-on fee. And especially in the face of, you know, this being a relatively financially um, unstable generation as a whole, but also just being young people where money is tight, um, you know, paying potentially GNCC fees, USCA fees, an add-on fee for college curling. Um, you know, we asked to see sort of where all the money was going. Um, so I'll, I'll, for, I'll make sure to re-forward all of those questions so that um, any remaining ones can be put in writing, but I want to make sure to hand things off to the other folks in the chat who have their hands raised. Um, I, I, I will. Can I just address that real quick, though, Chris? Yeah, of course, um, So, so typically, what what what's happened with college curling was the approach was the thirty four dollars base USA curling membership that anybody pays to com to compete in USA curling events. The add on fee was twenty dollars per person, um, but there's no entry fee for nationals for participants, and our cost to run a nationals event is typically six thousand to sixty five hundred. So we, you know, with 34 plus 20, we accumulated $4,840 in FY22. So I don't think that there's a lot of money here that we're, there's no money that we're taking from this. Uh, we're still losing money on the event. The idea was to add the $20 across all college curlers instead of burdening only those participating in the nationals 
which you know most of our national events now are 150 dollars per person but if some are less um, but that was the idea behind the $20 that it was spread out and not just limited to the people at the Nationals Championship. I'm happy to revisit that formula, but no, it does no. cost us money to run events. Uh, no, I absolutely hear you. And, you know, as, as Bondspiel organizers, a lot of us totally understand that. And I totally hear you on that. Um, and I think it would be helpful if you're willing to share those records just so that we can share them with all of our constituents. That would be great. Sure. Um, and I'm open to anybody else on the meeting sharing any reform they'd like to address in terms of that strategy or that approach. Um, and that's certainly something that Sam and I as, as national reps can revisit as well. But I want to hand it over to Sam and a couple other people on the call with their hands raised. So y'all go ahead. Thanks. Yeah, just real quick, I'll just add one thing on that. The more typical approach would be to, you know, when people are playing the nationals, that's when they would the, pay the higher entry fee. So, like I said, the twenty dollars was to spread it out among the general population. But Sam, you you're up. Uh, I, I just want to say I think Carly had her hand raised uh, oh. first, so I'd like to let her go first. Oh, hi, Carly. Hi, thanks. Um, some of the things I said, uh, Chris already said, so thank you, Chris. I know I emailed uh, you earlier. Um, and I also, just for reference, I was a college rep when I uh, was in college curling. I think I was one of the first reps. And now uh, I help coordinate college curling at my local um, club at Philly. Um, and so one of the things I just want to like point out, not a, it's a question, but just like a reminder that college curlers have little to no say at their home clubs and the decisions that their home host clubs are going to make regarding their decisions to stay or not stay part of the USDA. Um, so I'm glad that, you, as you mentioned before, you're willing to, to listen. And I also want um, to listen to like options for what if clubs and what if 50% of the clubs don't join uh, the USDA again. Um, and I also wanted to point out, because you did mention like, uh, college nationals is an event that USCA runs. Um, just a reminder that like all college curlers are not, are still going to pay that $34. And as you said, that $20 additionally on there. Um, so that, uh, those two like fees would always be paid by college curlers. Regardless, we would still be paying for the, uh, the, uh, benefits we are hoping to get even if our host clubs decide with with no opinions of the college curlers because they are never asking our opinions. What yeah, they it's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. Um, I understand. I understand the dilemma you face there. And I, I, I'm, I'm going to, I, I think it can be resolved. Um, you know, uh, so uh, like I said, we don't want to keep college curlers out of the event this year. So. Yeah. And then I'm, I, I was really hopeful that Chris has experienced more say and 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 just from what uh chris you said right now um when i was a, a college rep i remember there only being like two meetings i attended and i had zero say in anything of of hope so i do hope that maybe in our future uh the college reps actually have some kind of decision making power because I, I had hoped that Chris had Chris and Sam have some decision making power, but it'll be up to Chris and Sam to say if they actually feel like they do have any decision making stand or if they're just a mouthpiece um, for the college curlers. Um, Carly, I will, I, I appreciate that. And, and, you know, it's really, you know, heartwarming and helpful to have former national reps on the call. And it really speaks to the passion that we have for this sport and this community. Um, and, you know, Kelsey, thank you for adding that in the chat. And I've spoken to many former um, college national reps, and I will say that I echo your sentiments completely. Um, I think the influence that I have and that Sam have is because we have each other's backs primarily and secondarily because we've built relationships outside of college curling, not because we inherently wield power within it. Yeah, I just circle back here. I mean, I think some of what's happened here is is the growth of college curling, which may warrant a new governance structure of your own. And um, we certainly and I certainly have no stake in wanting to actually guide that. I would like to see it formed by the college curling group. Um, so I don't I don't think we're clinging to any 
uh, formula here for for how you want to move forward or govern yourselves or communicate with us. I mean, um, so I'm I'm happy if if you're undertaking some reform of, of how you know you select your representatives and uh, happy to support that. Uh, real quick, speaking of um, clinging to things, is Gordon going to return? Because I don't see him in the in the presenters list tonight. I feel well, like I, I'm going to guess that maybe Gordon is a uh, was a little you know put out by some of the comments about him. I do know, um, like I've known Gordon a long time. I know he put a lot of time and effort into this early. And if there's dissatisfaction about it now, I'm sure it, I'm sure it bothers him. Okay. On a personal level. Like that's a valid reason for him to leave the meeting and not return when people have questions for him. Bobby, I'm not going to try to get him back on. I don't know. Maybe he's on now. Is that is that Gordon? I am on. Yeah. Uh, can Great. People hear me. Yeah, we can hear you now, Gordon. You're on the phone, so okay. that's great. Very good. Yeah, I've been on for a while, and uh, I apologize for the initial call. Uh, we've got some snow coming down, and it's getting on my Starlink dish, I believe, and uh, interrupting my internet service a little bit. Um, you know, I I really apologize. You know, if if I come across as being autocratic, and a lot of that has to do with the you know, history, and if it's time for me to move on for the betterment of college curling, so be it. I will turn over everything I've got to whoever wants to take it on. It's not a small uh, undertaking, though. And to be honest, uh, we've had uh, issues in the past finding people to be on the committee as non-student committee members. And the non-student committee members are probably just as important as the student committee members, given that uh, we tend to stick around longer and have institutional knowledge. A lot of the things that we do now are based on things that have happened or the results of things that have happened in the past. And I'm the first one to, to go to that and, and say that you know, it, it's, uh, I have a favorite saying that um, comes from one of my favorite authors, and it's that habits outlive the situations that created them and policies remain in place after the situations that inspired them had changed. And if this is the time to start looking for a change in how this uh, operates, so be it. Um, I will step aside. I don't want to be a hindrance. Thanks, Gordon. So I think that that clears up any confusion there um, about how we want to proceed. And you certainly have it for me as well that we're I'm happy to have you have this group, you know, govern themselves as they see fit with a with a with a process. Um, Sam, is that your hand up now? Uh, yes, I just wanted to thank you, Dean, for uh, having this town hall and uh, it's been it's it's uh, nice that we can all be here tonight. Um, I think if we want to take a step back, I think a bigger issue here is um, I think one communication. Um, I think better communication between whatever the board will be now uh, and also between the colleges themselves and the board and USA curling to that extent. And I think also another thing is, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of smart students here and and coaches that would love to help out the organization and college curling um more than they can now and i think um that you know it needs to be more than just uh one person i mean gordon as you can say it's, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of um time and i think there's a lot of people on this call today and a lot of people that are in college curling that would love to do whatever they can to uh to help out and and, and help govern this and uh, find solutions to these problems. So Sam, if I could back up for a minute, let, let's just walk down this because I'm trying to figure out how what you want from us a little bit more. But so I've always considered this group running, like I said, somewhat independently um, and and then us formalizing the national championship and running running that event. Um, which isn't, say, a lot different than some of our regional playdown structures where we run the national championship and the regions send their representatives. Um, but 
as you, know, you don't have to answer this now, but going forward, I want to know how how USA Curling can help this group more. And that may not happen until you have a new setup with a new way of leading yourselves. But I'm certainly interested to how how we help you and 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 how we how we serve you beyond you know orchestrating a national championship. Right, absolutely. So I think one thing that um, at least a lot, as I've talked with other presidents, talked with Chris, and talked with everybody, um, I think one thing especially uh is the is like for example if you go on the usa curling website uh when you look at the uh college championship page mm -hmm. uh, it just has uh, a link to the schedule and that's pretty much all there is on there uh if you look at the five and under uh championships the club championships and among others juniors uh when you go on that page there's links to line scores schedules teams results streaming info housing or uh lodging info uh there's even like a meet the team on one of them uh with like pictures of each of the teams and info about them there might be um some more like social media attention to it and i think that's something that i think we as college curlers would want from usa curling specifically and on your end and i think mm -hmm. also yeah. uh being independently run is, is great and i think that's something that would should be looked into but i think usa curling or at least some governing body needs to be the vehicle to allow that to happen. Um, you know, we, USA Curling is the reason why we're here on this call talking about it now. Um, there needs to be, or, you know, organizers, well, that, whether that be Chris and I and or, or with Gordon, uh, with, with the college committee as a whole. Um, that's something I'd love to see is, uh, is I, I love the, how we're going through tonight, but I think that's something we can really work on as well. So just quickly, Sam, I'll talk to the national championship element of that. And that's something, look, I think all our national championships in the last year, especially, and even previously, I could go back decades. Um, I think all our national championships were not treated with the gravity they deserved. And we're working hard to change that. Um, this year, we want all our championships to have a championship feel. So obviously, you know, there should be a standard template in place that college curling would have as well um, with scores, et cetera. Now, we've got a lot of updating to do to all our championships right now on that front on the website, but I see no reason why college curling, the college curling nationals would be treated any differently. So one thing I've said to Aaron Kaler, our events rep is at all our championships, um, whether they're in a club or an arena, we want people, the competitors when they walk in to feel like it's not just league night. So we are making efforts to make our championships feel uh, perhaps more important to the competitors. So I hope we, I hope you'll see that reflected in the college curling nationals this year. Absolutely, and I'll just finish off with just two points on that. Um, I think the nationals itself last year was, the event itself in person was fantastic. Um, I think, I think it was organized well. I just think, you know, the things surrounding the actual games itself, games themselves, and everything that we were discussing earlier. And also, um, I would love to see uh, college curling be included in those conversations uh, with as with the other championships going forward uh, when we, uh, as you're saying, try to make them um, uh, more national championship-like. Yeah, I see no reason why we wouldn't. I think last year, and I'm not using this as an excuse, but I think it all our championships got bunched together. And I believe yours was at the same time as maybe the mixed doubles, I, I can't remember, but it was concurrent with another one. One thing we're trying to do now, uh, and we ask for, we ask all our national championships to try to, uh, you know, indulge us a bit here, but we're trying to spread them out as much as possible throughout the season. So we don't have any of the overlap. So that should help, but there's much, there's other, there are other things we will do as well. Okay. Thank you very much, Dean. Thanks, Sam. Dean, we have a few hands up. Uh, sure. First one is from Kelsey. Hi, Kelsey. Kelsey Becker, um, she does have a question here in chat. Hello. Sorry, um, I'm here with Evan. Sorry if you hear broom stacking uh, near us. Um, I just want to make sure that um, I know, you know, US. AC is based in Minnesota, a lot of Minnesota, uh, Wisconsin connections. And because of the nature of college curling and the limited budgets we work with, a lot of times the Northeastern schools aren't able to really coordinate too much. I think that's one of the big reasons that 
we sort of see the GNCC as being our only exposure to other curling organizations. Um, but anyway, uh, because we're unable to really get to the Midwest too much and have these connections, which I'm so happy, Dean, that you're, you had this organized and are interested in hearing from us. Um, but I'd like to make it clear that there are a lot of, at this point, alumni of the program that are really happy to help in any way possible that we can with the current college curlers and their leadership and any sort of organizing they need. I know that it's really hard with the limited institutional memory of college curling. Most college curler, curling leaders are only leaders for two years and then they graduate and move out of the city they're attending college in and can't stick around the club that they started with. Um, and I will say that uh, we also know that um, the, what would you say, representative of uh, the Northeast on the college curling board, I should say former member, uh, I think can very safely be, like, be said acting as a bad actor and not representing that huge support that college curlers do have out here and the work that people that are in for the long haul are willing to put in. All right, Kelsey, I appreciate that. Um, I, I can appreciate, just so you know, I mean, I, I, I live in New Jersey, so I know the struggle. And when I curl seriously, it, I know the struggle of, you know, trying to get to events elsewhere. I also know that, um, you know, on a national level, one of our biggest challenges is trying to give people in all parts of the country equal access to our championships. And it's probably why we constantly review our championships, et cetera. But yeah, um, I'm not sure I have easy answers for that. I just want you to know that, oh, I think maybe if you could mute just for a sec. I think um, I want you to know that while our main office might be in Egan, Minnesota, we literally have about one person who goes into that office regularly. So yes, we have a presence in the Twin Cities. Um, but our staff is distributed around, so which I think is helpful. Um, and we're certainly aware of the challenges. I know Andy just weighed in from curling from Arizona. It's not easy either. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know if there's ever a perfect solution for that in any of our events, but we'll work hard to, to try to mitigate those challenges as best we can. Somebody else's hands up? Oh, sorry, go ahead, Kelsey. I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, hi, Dean. This is Evan Mullaney, also from Broomstones. Oh, hi, um, Evan. How are you? Of, good, thanks. Good to see you. Yeah. Uh, sorry I didn't catch you at uh, Juniors this past week. Yeah, weeks. it's too bad. Yeah. Uh, just kind of going off of what Kelsey was saying with the alumni support that we have, especially here in the Northeast. Right. Uh, one thing that we're doing a lot, especially to help kind of the newer clubs with their events, because a lot of these schools and club presidents and club vice presidents have never run bond skills before. We're right. starting to circulate internal kind of brackets and pool formats that people can just go back to. So if we could get something like that on more of a national level and have a point person kind of coordinate either nationally or by region so that some college curler can go to that person and say, hey, I need help with X, Y, Z. There's already a list in place and one central location where they can then go and get extra support. Yeah, I, I think it's a good point. Uh, Evan, I think uh, draw formats are a long-standing need for us to provide, and um, I'm hopeful that we can start to prevent, present a, have a platform where those are available. Um, it's always a little tricky draws. I think draws are part art, part science, uh, because you end up with somebody who wants to start later, et cetera, or you've got, you know, it's not always as simple as 16 teams on four sheets, but uh, we, I'd be happy to, first, I'd probably ask to mine what you have, ourselves and take that and crowdsource what's good, um, but also happy to, you know, put that on our agenda of things we need to provide um, to to college, to, to all curlers, frankly. I, I do think it's great to hear that you have alumni that are willing to step up. That would be really helpful. We're making an effort to leverage the talents of all curlers when we can. We have no, uh, I have no um, reluctance to do that. Uh, we're going to I'm going to leave this meeting and start working with the athlete health and safety working group. And that's all curlers. So, um, yeah, I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. And and just to go off of I looked into that announcement of the athlete um, health and safety group, I think it was called. Yeah. Um, uh, sort of going back, um, I think a lot of the misrepresentation that might have happened on the national 
college curling board was due to a bad faith actor that as far as I'm aware um, had a safe sport investigation about. So I think that's another one of Evan and I's big concerns and a question to you is, is there an update on how former safe sport reports have been going? Because we deal with college kids, we interact directly with colleges. It's difficult for us to encourage involvement with a group that it in any way might underplay that. Yeah, no, I, I think um, clearly I put together this athlete health and safety working group because I think our safe sport and overall reporting needs to be revised. So I'm we're meeting for the first time tonight. We formed the group, got the last few members for the group um, last week. Um, and we have an advisor from uh, from the Athletes Council for uh, Council for U.S. Council for Athletes Health and Safety to help, to help guide us and Safe Sport will be involved, too. But the charge is really to do immediate, the three immediate things are one, to reform our intake policy of safe sport reporting. So it doesn't go through the CEO, no matter who's in the CEO chair. But we, you know, there, there are other NGBs we can turn to, I think, for, for a better process on that. The second aspect is to uh, determine a process for what happens when a claim comes into safe sport and they don't claim jurisdiction and it comes back to us. Right now it ends up in a, in an unresolved area that's not not fair to anyone. Uh, so that's the second aspect of this working group. Uh, and the third aspect is to review how all claims or all reports have been handled over the past three years. So that's the initial scope. Um, and I, I, I'm, I'm endeavoring to keep it that focused because I want this group to be as effective as possible and I want them to move quickly on those three things. Now, going forward, there may be other things we incorporate but I, I think we need to I think we need to do two things, create a culture of reporting uh, where people are comfortable reporting and then also create uh, proper mechanisms for evaluating reports, um, you know, both in and out of safe sport and, and safe sport. Um, if you read the H report, the H report noted that safe sport only only um, only resolves 8% of the cases it receives. So clearly there is work for us to do when it when things come out of that. So. Uh, that needs to be resolved pretty quickly. I, I will say right now, on the very interim basis, the safe sport reports go through me and Katie Baker. We both want that to change as quickly as possible. That's why that's a primary focus of this group right away. Thank you, Dean. Sure. Okay, Dean, next question is from Paul. Hi, Paul. Uh, hello, Dean. Pleasure to meet you. My name is Paul Suter. I am uh, one of the three vice presidents of the Nebraska Curling Club uh, in Lincoln. Um, okay. My question pertains to the fact that uh, regarding actually what Kelsey and Evan said on this aspect of little or a lack of communication between Northeastern and Midwestern Curling Clubs, um, if it's at all possible to, I guess my proposal would be maybe a more standardizing of communications in that there's a representative, like an elected representative, from any Midwest uh, curling club that acts directly with, say, Chris or with Sam regarding uh, decisions and whatnot to act as an advocate uh, advocate for the Midwestern region. I noticed a large amount of responses and questions proposed at tonight's town hall are from Northeastern clubs. And I know there are a lot of attendees tonight that are from Midwestern clubs, but I feel it'd be good to have a strong advocate from Midwestern uh, clubs as a whole. I think that's good practice for, you know, any organization and we we may, um, you know, I've even been weighing how we we improve our national organizations communications with each member club. So um, and not not expecting it to sort of go through the region. So, yeah, I think that's a great point as, as you as you take on, a you know, the pro the work of of changing how you how you operate. But yeah, and then one other thing uh, regarding uh, the potential, I believe uh, we should also advocate for a strong issue of transparency, especially with uh, prices for nationals, which was alluded to earlier. But I think that would definitely be good to sort out what fees are going towards nationals and whatnot. But that's all I wanted to say. So thank you, Dean. OK. Next question is from Jack. Hi, Jack. Hey, Dean. Uh, first off, just want to thank you for having this town hall. I was on the student board for 2020, going to 2021, representing Harvard, and you're already like much more visible than Chad ever was. Okay. Uh, Wanda, I appreciate that. Wanda, post forward two questions. Uh, sure. One, 
when we did see him, Jeff mentioned how college curling was a growth area in his mind to create lifelong curlers. Is there any growth plan right now from USA Curling to help expand the college game's reach, or is that something that normally falls to the college curlers? And second, since college curling has run for a while, there's now a pretty sizable alumni base at individual clubs have had mixed success in cultivating on their own. Would love to know if there's any possibility for like a college-wide fund that folks can directly donate to through USA Curling. I know I'm not alone in wanting to help clubs subsidize bond school organizing or help launch clubs at new schools. Thanks, Jack. I'll tackle that that last point first, um, and it's an interesting one because uh, as we look at a new membership model and, uh, and new governance, one of the things that I've said to people is what's amazing is forget whatever you think about $34 for your membership or whatever. We've never asked for more than $34 except for the 20 that you guys give towards your national championship, but we've never offered people the opportunity to do exactly what you say, um, and that is to can I donate $50 to college curling? Can I donate $50 to help arena clubs? Can I donate $50 towards junior curling? Can I donate $25 towards the national team? We've never asked for any of those things. Uh, and Gabby who's on this call just sent me a document that I just approved for uh, giving people the option to do that. And college curling will be part of that. So that's, that's a great observation, something we're doing. So at least we're on the same page there. And now, Jack, I can't remember what your first question was, to be honest. I was so excited about that second one. So No worries. So, and I'm excited, too. Uh, the first question was just on a long-term growth plan. Is this oh, something yeah. where USA Curling would take a larger yeah. role in trying to expand the game's reach? Or would that, as it normally has over the last 10 years, kind of fall down to individual students at schools deciding they want to start a club? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'd agree with Jeff that, that I, we'd like to see this grow, um, college curling. Uh, I probably need to get my arms around it a little bit more than I do now um, and how the, the best way to do that. Obviously, you know, there's there's a couple things at play here. One is, you know, college sports in this country is obviously a, a big deal. And then I'm also wondering, though, how does how does this group and, and I'd be turning to this group for help on this, you know, is what is the path to to further growth or further recognition among the college sports community? And I'm never quite sure. I'm not quite sure, to be honest. I'd have to talk to you all about that. I don't know if that means becoming trying to become recognized club sports in every college or is there a desire to be varsity sports and, and how can we be part of that? Um, so um, I'm happy to have those discussions. I think most of you on this call will have more insight into that than I can provide right now. Thanks, Dean. Much appreciated. Thanks. Next hand up from Isaac. Hi there, Isaac. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yeah, hey Isaac, just before you start, I'm just gonna, I don't want people to think I'm cutting anything off, but I do have this athlete health and safety working group starting at nine. So we've got 15 minutes. I'm happy to push the athlete health and safety working group a little bit, be, join them a little late, but I'd rather not be too late, but go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Isaac Safran. I was a uh, former member of uh, RPI curling. I know for a lot of brimstones with Kelsey and Evan. Oh, great. Um, I sort of want to, uh, clarification. I know this is still um, very much in, up in the air right now, just for my own understanding, because it was a little unclear. So there's the US, there's the USA curling dues that every curler across the country pays. And then there is the dedicated dues just for college curlers that they pay in addition, correct? That's correct. And that is in lieu of uh, an entry of a national championship fee that other every other national championship has. Okay. So every other national championship, when you compete for the national championship, you're paying anywhere from 100. We're trying to standardize $150 per person. So that $20 goes towards that. I could show you financials where we're still losing. We've consistently probably lost $2,000 a year in the college nationals which I don't mind, nobody in the organization minds. I just want to make it clear that we're not, you know, we're not making money on the backs of college curlers. Right, okay. Yeah, I just wanted that clarified. So okay. that kind of was my question, thank you. All right. Okay, next hand up is Carly. Hi, Carly. Sorry, it wouldn't let me unmute for a second. That's and sorry right. to talk again. Um, I just. I'm going to assume, Carly, you're Cody's sister. Is that right? Wife. Wife. Sorry. Okay. 
<laughs> Very different Did than you, sister. But. <laughs> you, yeah, sorry. I didn't I didn't know Cody was married yet, to be honest. I've known him since he was 17. So congratulations. I've been but dating him since he was 17. So. Oh, there you go. Well, I, <laughs> I wasn't in those social circles with him. So anyways, can, uh, anyways, carry on. Sorry. <laughs> oh, it's all good. Um, well, I was about to say, um, uh, we were talking about uh, a lot of other people mentioned there's a lot of alumni in this call, um, a lot of uh, past cur uh, college curlers. Um, and we were also talking about like communication um, and just surrounding that point. Uh, we, there's tons of people who have hands in college curlers. Obviously, there's the actual curlers and the presidents of their clubs, but then they also have <laughs> their club advisors from their schools. And then almost every club, like curling club, has their own college curling advisors that run their club. A lot of them are alumni. Um, and so I'm wondering if there's a way, if we could brainstorm a way to have a better, like, communication between it and I know that every year I see the email still um about like which clubs are still participating which schools are still participating um because schools drop members the members uh like cycle through universities and I'm assuming you're having a similar problem with not problem but like five and under probably has a similar thing where it cycles through a lot, but college is a little bit more complicated yeah. than that because there's no standard amount of years that anybody curls for. Right. And so having a way to keep alumni in the loop, we want to help and we don't know how other than just at our clubs. Um, I also just wanted to say for, we've been talking about like, how can we form a better board? Because I think you started off your meeting with oh, college curling runs itself pretty much. A lot of us college curlers and former college curlers are like, from our perspective, Gordon runs everything, even though there is a board who makes some joint decisions with Gordon. And so just a figuring out a framework. Yeah, Chris said in the comments, figuring out a framework for like, what do we actually need for a board, how can we get the alumni involved in this? Um, I just wanted to put that out there, like the actual how, because there's so many of us and we just need a way to actually communicate that. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, I don't mean to sound like I'm not engaged, but I, I want it to come from, the, from this group. I mean, and I think Gordon's made clear that, you know, he's happy to step aside. And, and, and you know, I, I think as USA Curling, what we, what we would like is just some consistent point of communication, whether that's your board or however you, you get to that, um, wh whatever that might be, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I'm happy to work with it. Um, yeah, I think, I think from like, at least from what we need from USCA is like a framework for what positions do we need filled? Mm -hmm. And then from the available people who are willing to work from it, who can fill, who who wants to run for these positions, elections. Yeah, Chris said elections, but also sending out that message to the alumni who are potentially interested and already doing a lot of this work. Yeah. Well, I'm excited that someone's asking USA Curling for guidance on on, on governance. So we haven't exactly been, uh, been getting a lot of, well, we've had a lot of questions about changing our own, but I'm happy to provide guidance on that. I think there's probably, you know, frankly, there are probably some curling club models that would work for you as well. I, but college does have some added complexity, but, and I think people are saying there should be alumni on the board. I would say um, I used to be on the, the athlete rep to the USOPC Athletes Advisory Council, and there was, uh, in addition to current athletes, there were athletes like myself at the time were, you know, beyond competition. And there were also alumni who were well beyond. Um, so there's there's certainly aspects to everybody. I would actually think you would consider alumni much like um, a lot of boards, including ours, would would think about independent directors. So yeah, I think I think we can help with that. I think you probably have plenty of smart people on this call who could put it together just as well, to be honest. But happy to help there. Next um, hand from Adam. Hi, Adam. 
Hi, Dean. Uh, so my name is Adam Billmeyer. I am the vice president of the <clears throat> University of Toledo's club. Um, oh, yeah, so we're Bowling Green. You yes, right? yep. yeah. So we're we're pretty pretty new to new, USA yeah. curling yeah. and college curling. Uh, we just started up uh, in college curling in the spring. Our club only started last fall. Um, and so I've got two questions that both kind of revolve around like some help that we can maybe get from USCA. So, you know, with college curling being its own, like governing itself in a way, um, that's good in some ways, but also like there's not a ton of support we can get like as a new club. So Gordon's been helpful. He's given us, you know, special permissions to do local bond spiels that aren't collegiate and stuff like that, ways for us to try to remain competitive given our remoteness, but also like, um, it, it's tough for us to stay involved and engage with other schools. So like um, all of our travel this semester has been out of pocket for our members. And I'm having most of my team say that they don't want to travel anymore because it's so expensive. Um, so like, I think you've touched on this a little earlier, but would like US Curling be interested in helping these schools get started and the schools that aren't necessarily like located well? Um, staying involved? Is that something that they could maybe help us out with since it's not something the schools on their own could do? Uh, I mean, I'll be perfectly honest here. There's lots of things I'd like to do with USA curling money, and certainly that would be one of them. Um, mm -hmm. But it is a pretty long list in the, you know, sure. we're not exactly, um, you know, we're not, we're a pretty efficient organization. And I, I, I wish every time I talk to an arena club, I wish I could write them a check for a million dollars and get a club built. But um, yeah, I mean, look, I think part of it might be just, we'll start with asking people who want to contribute to Mm -hmm. arena to college curlers and and then of course you're you'll have to figure out how to use those dollars um but i don't want people to think that my thoughts here that oh you know first of all i i i, I acknowledge the success and applaud the success you've had i just think you it may be a point now even as gordon alluded to that you've reached a a point in your growth where you're, you're ready for the next thing and certainly happy to help and willing to want to engage in that and be a part of that but also uh, want to let let college curling operate somewhat independently in in terms of thought. So, um, mm -hmm. in terms of communication, I, I you know I I know you got you had that Discord channel. I don't know you know I I was I would monitor that. I didn't weigh in on it much, but um, uh, yeah, I mean, any way we can help on that, sure. I I don't know you know right now I can't tell you I can commit a bunch of funds to that, but. Uh, if there are people who make donations when to college curling when they sign up for USA curling that will create a, a fund for college curling and going forward we certainly hope that you know um we continue to grow membership revenue despite the last few months and we continue to grow sponsorship revenue and we're operating in a in a in a place financially that would allow us to do some of the things we really would like to do yeah okay thank you um and then like kind of going off that then too. So I know for us getting started up, um, a big hurdle for us was negotiating with our curling center, trying to get ice time, trying to get affordable ice time that college yeah. students are going to be able to pay. Um, do you think maybe USA Curling could step in and try to give guidelines to clubs so that there's something in place for these uh, clubs that haven't dealt with college curlers before so it's not so tough for schools to get started? Yeah, certainly willing to be an advocate for college curling at clubs. I have heard about the struggles you've had um, and uh, would like to help there. Um, I think I think one of the things, one of the ways we could help is is work with this group to show how how college curling can be, uh, you know, isn't a drain on clubs. I mean, one of the things I've always said about college curling is you're likely to use the facility at times when it's underutilized a lot of the time. So. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, be happy to put together some thoughts on that and with you and and thoughts of our own on how to how to convince clubs to to give you the ice time that you need. Yeah, that's very helpful. Thank you. And, and I'll just say, if you want, you know, if you want someone to, you know, I'd be happy to talk to the people at Bowling Green about your particular situation. I will say, you know, our member clubs don't always want to hear from us about those kind of things. They like to operate someone independently, so. Um, you know, they're not franchise operations or anything, so sure, sure. we have to tread in a certain way, but I'm certainly mm -hmm. willing to be an advocate. Yeah, thank you. All right, I got just about four minutes. I, I'm, how many hands do we have, Gabby? Three? We have two more. Two more. Okay, great. And I, I, I don't mean to cut this off, folks. I really don't. I could be happy to keep talking, but I had to schedule these back to back tonight. 
Um, Jackson is next. Yeah, hi, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, yeah, um, so I am the current president of the EWSP Curling Association, and I just wanted to reiterate kind of what Gordon said earlier. I think it kind of got pushed aside and forgotten about, but I just wanted to reemphasize like how much Gordon has done for the college curling tour. And I, I know that his his work that he's done doesn't go unnoticed, at least from from my standpoint. And I think that the the conflicts that that's kind of been arising from the East Coast teams. I just want to know, like, if if Gordon, his position kind of is deemed unnecessary, are we voting that he is no longer organizing USA College Curling? Or how, how does that kind of go? Because I believe that Gordon is extremely important for the continuity of college curling in the United States. So I would just like to address that really quick. Well, I don't I don't think that's for me to address except to say thanks for your kind words about Gordon, because knowing Gordon, I do know how much he invests time and energy on behalf of curling. And I often said without compensation or complaint. So um, I think that's for something for the rest for this group to discuss. Um, it's probably not you know, something that I'm going to offer a big opinion on here, but I, I do think you're going to have to figure out how to, how to run things. Um, uh, so, you know, I, th I think that's a conversation for the rest of you to have. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We have one more hand and it's from Thomas. Hi there. Hi, Dean. Uh, this is uh, Thomas Rathert. I am uh, right now a senior vice president with the, uh, UW Green Bay Curling Club, and uh, it's a pleasure to be in a call with you. Hey, uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, we were talking about definitely, or some of the other people were talking about, um, uh, and I, I think it specifically came from Toledo about the difficulties of uh, starting up a club. And um, I um, kind of wanted to, I guess, go more into like how we could get more, I guess, people coming up from the junior ranks and um, uh, maybe interested in trying to pursue any sort of um, uh, new college program that they, um, uh, from any college that they maybe go to. Because um, obviously there's a, um, endless possibilities I think that we could have. We could expand all across America. And I think that's really cool. But I think that will be like really key in terms of like, in terms of, just growing the whole college curling as a whole. So I just wonder, um, uh, is there any resources that maybe USA Curling could offer, I guess, um, junior curlers? Um, or how many junior curlers actually are aware that college curling actually exists? And um, uh, I guess just like, um, it would be really cool to see some other junior curlers try and start up a club and use their knowledge of curling and obviously they can maybe work with their advisors at their clubs and anyone else that um is kind of in the in the loop to try and get the whole aspect of a college club going so what, what do you think about that well good thoughts there i think one thing we could do for this group and for college curling is to make sure as you note that uh, curlers who are curling juniors or U18s um, headed to college know about college curling. And that might be as simple as having some materials at U18 playdowns, U18 nationals, U21 junior events, um, or having some of you come in to speak to those groups. That could be really helpful. So I think that those would be valuable. In terms of starting, one thing I, we're doing with the Arena Club Working Group is they're developing a how to start and run a successful arena club. I think that somehow that that would be something great to work with this group on and develop that kind of roadmap for somebody who wants to do this. And, um, you know, we, we can help guide that. I think this group is probably going to be the one that's best suited to actually developing the content, quite frankly, but certainly help. We can help guide it and, and we'll we'll make sure it gets distributed as, you know, hopefully on our content platform. Yeah, definitely. I will say that I'm uh... In about two weeks, of course, we have the Rice Lake College Bond spiel. And aside from the club, probably going to be really packed in about that time. Um, uh, they do are, of course, running the college spiel and a, ju and a junior spiel together. And I do kind of think that that is a 
pretty smart idea with trying to link junior curling with college curling. So thank yeah, you for, um, yeah, thank you for this time. And um, uh, yeah. Hey, I'm going to jump into my other call folks. You guys are welcome to stay on and use this if you want further discussion. I, I, I don't know. I think that can work, but uh uh, and I'm happy to do this again, right? It's an hour, and obviously we could add longer. So I'd be happy to do it again. Um, just um, and and want to reconnect with with this group to find out, you know, what direction you're headed in. So um, use me as a resource. I don't have all the answers, but I will try to get answers uh, as much as I can. All right. Thanks, everybody.